Hello party people, my name's Relevant and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be pulling apart the water loop in my system to do some updates or some modifications. Because today I'm going to be changing out the reservoir. It's always a good day when you get an order in from Performance PCs. Today, nothing too fancy, just a number of fittings that I need to tie up these loose ends. We got some rotary 90s in black nickel because they were out of black. Now, I like to avoid rotary fittings at all possible because the way I see it, that's where you're most likely to get a leak. But, you know, I've used them successfully many times and so have so many people. I do remember a Jay's Two Sets video is one of the few leaks he got in his system. It was from a rotary fitting. An attempt to avoid using rotary fittings if I can, I got some 90s and some couplers. Now, this is not always a good idea because you don't get to choose where it's going to firm up. Like, let's see, if I put two of them together, what are the chances I'll get? See what I mean? I can do that direction, but I don't get to choose to do this direction or this direction. It won't be tight. So this is a bit of a gamble. It could be a waste of money. I'm going to try it and see what happens, but yeah, I got these just in case. A plug for the spare hole in that reservoir, a fill port. I've never had a fill port before, never really needed one, but for this particular mod, I'm going to need a fill port. And it comes with this uh, fancy double-ended tool here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. And then finally, some more 3 8 barbs. Now these guys are a bit different. Some of you might not be familiar with these ones. These are Phobia Perfect Seal barbs. Initially, Danger Den Perfect Seal barbs back in the day. I have been using this style of barb in my main rig for well over a decade now. It's one of my favorite designs. It's the design that I'm used to. Now I consider them expert only because as you're tightening up, you gotta make sure you put just the right amount of torque onto them. If you put too much, you can warp the seal because as you can see they don't have that lip that other fittings do for the o-ring to sit into to stop it from like squishing out so if you screw up installing these you, you could get a leak the other thing with them is it is difficult to initially get a fresh people piece of pipe on them because they don't have that you know that that taper at the front to slide on so you really got to force on it at first which you know you risk loosening the fitting or putting too much flex on your component like a water block on your motherboard maybe damaging your motherboard or CPU. But once you do get them on, all that surface area is completely, it cannot leak. It's physically impossible and you don't need pipe clamps. Once it's form fitted and you've ran the loop a while, the pipe will take on a shape, which actually makes it quite easy to get them on and off after if you want to make changes or modifications or just clean your loop. So I've actually, it's what I've gotten used to. Ah, uh, at the end of the day, you might as well just stick with the regular cutesy EK fittings or whatever with the lock ring. It's overall safer and more straightforward to install, but I like these guys, so I got more of them to add to it. Truth be told, these are the first fittings I ever bought for a water cooling build. Uh, I don't even remember how long ago, well over a decade, 12 years or more, and I've never had a problem with them. I like them. However, I can't get them in nickel anymore, so I've had to transition over to black for any additions that I make. So we should, uh, run you through what's going on in here, bud. So yes, if you haven't been formally introduced, this is Monolith, my main rig that I do all the things on. And she's not pretty, but she's got a lot going on. I need five and a quarters for uh, SATA hot swap. That's how I do most of my data management. And right there, I have a three terabyte Western Digital Red. That's my bulk storage for normal applications. And it's up there because I pulled out the three and a half drives so I could have another radiator. Cable management might not be up to bit with standards, but again, there's a lot going on with SATA cables and catch-up mustard adapters that are necessary to the base. Ugh, you can only do so much. But you know, it's gonna be slowly improved upon. Today, I am trying to salvage or scavenge or forge for more real estate. You see, on the front here, for the past, you know, since I first got into water cooling is my Danger Den Single Bay Res. And it has been in this case for 
ever. It's always been in this case. It's older than this case. It used to be in this V1000 back when it was my main rig. That case sucked for airflow though for enthusiast systems. This case doesn't suck for airflow for enthusiast systems. This case, though dated and not very modern looking, is such a good case, I haven't been able to justify replacing it. It was one of the first cases on the enthusiast market to support a 360 mil radiator, provided you sacrificed five and a quarter space. It has default 240 right here, but there is this, this air gap and it does work for adding a third fan. Uh, the fan I put here is slightly higher RPM so that it compensates, but yeah. <laughs> Those are old Antec Tri-Cool fans. Continuous service for over a decade. Every now and then I take them apart and re-lube the bearings, but other than that, some might poo-poo me, say, oh, those aren't just his best static pressure. <laughs> it works, bud. It works. Now I'll give you a brief rundown of the loop. We go from the reservoir down to the pump, an EKD5 head PWM controlled with a bits power mod top. There's my valve drain. There's those fittings I talked to about. There's some EK fittings because I ran out. It goes into the first rad that I call the intercooler. It goes out into my bottom card. These are non-matching cards physically, but matching cards electronically. That's an Asus Strix Vega 64. That's a Sapphire Reference Vega 64, but they clock and perform identically and crossfire well. I did, however, have to hook them up in series, but hey, there's only like a one degree difference between them and they both run cool, so yeah, small victory. Here's where I first started to having use rotary fittings. I got lucky being able to link them together like that, and then bam, another rotary fitting back out up into the 360. These fans don't run unless the water temperature hits a certain temperature. So my video cards, for the most part, are passively radiated. Until I fire up a game, they're fanless. Now to avoid rotary fittings, which didn't happen here, <laughs> unfortunately, but I do believe I did this mod before I got the second card, I have it adapt to a piece of hard tube. And in the front, quite picturesque-like, but not quite picturesque, it's picturesque when it's fired up because of the RGB mods. It comes in, loops around, goes through the rad, loops around back out, and then boom, but it goes over to the CPU, a heat killer four. Again, those same fittings. Then it goes out to the Hardware Labs uh, GTS. That's the first water cooling rad I ever got, Gen 2. And that's essentially my CPU rad. Two fans push pull. Those are deep cool gamer storm fans. Uh, really good fans for the price. And I have modified this one with RGB. You can see scraps of what used to be IDE cable there, linking the four together. And then, you know, out from there into the reservoir. Now the problem is real estate. Because this takes up two spaces, that takes up one space. I'm out of bays. And I got other stuff I'd like to add into there. How about this USB three card reader bud? I bought this for this system, especially since it's an old case that doesn't have three ports in the front. But you know, I had to omit it in favor of an external card reader because I needed the space, bud. I would like to, at the very least, put this back in here today. So I didn't have this EK reservoir once upon a time. It is the most recently acquired reservoir, acquired used on eBay, and I think Buddy sold it to me for like $20 shipped, like cheap AF. One of its claims to fame is it came with this little uh, flow rate spinner, but the spinner, it got spun and started making an awful noise. Mechanics and machinists will know what I mean by spun. So I simply just removed it. Now it's a perfectly good dual bay res. However, I'm noticing the width on it. It is narrower than my danger den. And I'm noticing there is just enough space here that I can fit it in front of this radiator. Then I can block up this hole, proper have a reservoir here, and then open up a five and a quarter bay for myself. It's a win-win situation. Normally you have to sacrifice five and a quarters to fit a 360 in here, but no, I'm gonna be able to have those five and a quarters do double duty, radiator and reservoir. That's my goal for today. Get that installed onto there, sir. Yes. So now what we need to be doing is uh, engaging in some general drainage domination. And to do that, these are the tricks that I have. I got these uh, risers here. They got fuzzies on the bottom, so they slip around my bench real easy, makes it easy for me to slide the case around. These were actually shoe stands at Sears. When Sears closed out, went bankrupt here in Canada, I, I, I raided that place every week I went in there and as the prices got cheaper and cheaper, I bought out fixtures. These things used to have shoes on display on them, but now they're lifts, like the lift for doing an oil change in a car. These are lifts for doing a water change on a computer. Come on now. Ah, so now 
I can slide this around quite easily and I can get my, um, well, this is a very expensive specialty tool. It might be about as unobtainium as a Ryzen 5000 at this point, I don't know. You might check your local grocery store, but we put that right about there and you see it's underneath the computer. Other specialty tool, I think Performance PC sells these. I don't know, I think this one's made in Canada. They might not have this particular model in stock, but we can use that to take the cap off. And then, you know, that's a half inch hose with a half inch fitting. We just go ahead and screw that on there. Oh, it's pointing upwards. That doesn't work for me. You know, we got it coming out the front of the pump. I just kind of use a clampy clamp like this to uh, hold the pipe into place some way, somehow, so that it stays in the bin. Now we can turn this and it'll start trickling out, but it's not really gonna release the schmoo until we proper open the cap on the resi. There she goes, bud. She's spewing out now. I'm not sure if Northern Abcor Process Equipment and Controls makes these trays anymore, but uh, we gotta start agitating on the system a little bit here. Getting all the water out of such a complicated loop, it can be a feat of engineering. You see, this tube here is still full of water. You need that tube to empty. Oh, that's gonna be tricky. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's gonna be a fun time, buds. Props need to go a little bit this way. <laughs> Do you even lift, bud? Working on rigs like this ain't for the faint of heart, I'm gonna tell you. Our reservoir is empty, but we still have an airlock here and here, but we might be able to start pulling some stuff apart here. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I gotta take a chunk of this apart anyway. So I'm gonna pull out my hot swap bays, and then that's gonna give me better access to the bottom of the res. Ah, uh, real quick, I can close off the valve here and go drain out this water, cause she's uh, she's pretty full. We got a liter of water and it's still, it's still only half empty. Derp, 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 derp. Derp, 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 derp. Okay, well, this can come out now, I'm sure. Brah, look at that bad boy. If you think you're making videos on YouTube and don't have something like this, I think you're doing it wrong. I can't live without this thing. Sata hot swap is life. Yeah, I know some people prefer wicked nass, but I just gotta pull out my, oh, I have a blinky light wired up here. Flip. Oh, look at this great little thing here for your retro hardware geeks out there. You see that? That looks like the front of an old XT. Beautiful, beautiful. But really, it's one of those plastic hard drive holders. And I actually had this off a broken XT drive. I don't know if you can see it, but you know, there's some there's some glue in there. I cut off the front of one of these five and a quarter to three and a half adapters, and I glued this nice XT adapter onto there so that I can mount my hard drive in there. So it's actually a hard drive with the blinky light, but it's a modern drive under there. <laughs> it's beautiful, I friggin' love this thing. So we're all cavernously opened in here now, making a, a condition in which it might be a bit safer to start unplugging wires. And with these convenient little towels, we put them into place. And now I can pull, give it a nice little tug and slip it right off. From there, we proceed to take a plug and put it in here so that as we manipulate this, we don't have spills. Do the same thing with the other guy, right? Now chances are we're gonna have to replace these tubes with a fresh tube that's gonna reach to the new reservoir. Here's an old school danger den plug. We'll put that one in there. These guys pop great and they're also perfect seal profiles. Now my reservoir is mostly free other than the RGB. Oh, oh, let's wrap that one. I don't do zip ties because I change on things too much. I prefer twist ties. The trick to doing uh, twist ties real pretty like is you get something like this spool. Oh, this was purchased from Radio Shack like freaking so many years ago and it's lasted me. This is 22 gauge solid copper wire with black insulation. And I just cut this to length and custom make any amount of twist tie that I need. Need a long one, need a short one, but it ends up pretty in the end. Unlike, you know, cheapy twist ties that have like those flat bits and those ridges and wears out fast and the little insulation plastic covering on it wears out fast too, it starts showing through. You know the drill. So now I should be able to pull this res. Oh, there's a mess of cables down there. There's other things that I want to change in here. Sometimes things get added on the fly and then because you're not starting from scratch, you don't end up with the best results. Huh, there it is, bud. Ancient, ancient. Oh, it's peeing on me. And I have some custom RGB that I actually cut here, which is truth be told, it was the RGB backlight on my Strix card. I removed it from the Strix card and pasted it to the top of the reservoir. And I'm gonna have to figure out how to integrate this into the new build some way, somehow. We gotta have that reservoir lit, bud. Lit or GTFO, right? Another pro tip, that's a 5 8 socket, just a 5 8 socket. And I keep this kicking around because it is great for just 
you know, hand tightening on these guys. Most fittings that I find that have the, um, you know, the bolt pattern on them uh, takes a 5.8 socket. Okay, this guy's um, dripping. <laughs> Straight dripping, bud. So in order to continue with this, my nice hard tube assembly has to come out. So that means I have to get the water out of that too. And it's a little bit trapped. However, if I pop the tubes off the front, I should be able to get the water out of them. These guys are zap strapped into place. As much as I like this way of doing things, we did have a bit of an ugly factor with this uh, mounting method here. All right. Oh yeah, that released some pressure, bud. Wah. Okay, now we have to do some trickery, uh, kind of maybe go like this. Whee. Come on, drain out there. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Water's just kind of stuck in there. Come on, water, get out. There you go. All right, can we pull this off now? Oh, oh, that's a tight one. We need more plugs. So we don't really need to plug this one because there's nothing really higher than it anymore. Water's not gonna go up out of here when it can drain out of here. My tubes are looking a bit green. Must be that discoloration. I only ever use hardware store tubing. Do not blow through your loop. That is one rule that I abide by. Now let's see if we can get this other tube off the rad now. Huh, other than it's getting tangled up in wires here. She's coming out pretty cleanly. Look at these cute little J tubes. Ah, uh, now our card's draining out. I need more plugs. I think we'll be okay like this. So a pro tip when you're manipulating a part, you know, I got these cheap plastic plugs, you know, buy more plugs than you need. I'm pretty sure by my estimations, this is the hole that is gonna be permanently plugged. So we'll go ahead and put its assigned plug in there right away. Bust out specialty tool, give her a snug. Just, you know, not tight, not that tight. We got this all plugged up. So now, even though there's some moisture in it, you don't have to worry about it spilling out while we uh, fix on that. And we will do the same thing to the frontmost rod. Now, I'm going to be using the bottom outlets on this guy. You're gonna notice the specialty tools designed to fit into a five and a quarter bay for the drainage purposes. Let's loosen on this plug, see what happens. Definitely, it's gonna, there's gotta be some water there, right? Yeah, look at it. And I managed to splash only a little bit of it inside the system. Keep many rags around, sir. Don't worry. This is sometimes a normal part of the process. As long as you make sure you don't get it anywhere questionable, just make sure you dry it up before you turn it back on. I'll replace that with one of these cheap plastic plugs. First, we're gonna, you know, put some more rags around in here. <laughs> Learn from your mistakes once, bud. So we're gonna be using this hole. I wanna plug it up for now. And get that into place, yeah. Let's remove this other plug. Whee! Oh, not much left in there. Get another cheap plastic plug up in there. Let's give her a bit of a tilt in here. Because I think it wants to drain out a bit there. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Now let's plug her up. I never got the proper adapter for these fittings. Just be gentle if you're gonna use pliers, right? Don't be harsh if you're gonna use pliers. Now let's get our black plug that's going to be assigned there. All right, so that rod is starting to become uh, what it's intended to be. Let's get this out of here. There is some debris in here, hmm. So the challenge here now is to fit this in here, right? Which, you know, doesn't seem like it should be hard. If it wasn't for the fact that when EK designed this, they didn't put notches here, and a lot of cases have these flanges. So those flanges, they either have to go, or I have to notch the, well, I'm not putting notches in my reservoir, bud. The easiest way is to change out this on the case. The easiest way to do that is to attempt to bend it out of place. Using various methods, uh, that might not work. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we hopefully don't bang around our system. <laughs> yeah, you know what, that might not be the best idea. But I can't think of a better solution here, like, kind of have to. Wish me luck, buds. If I've screwed, I, I don't feel like I shocked it that much. That stuff bent easy enough. Oh, but there she goes. And that's gonna be an attractive reservoir up in there. It's just a case of how do we get RGB on it? Is there a way we can fit our existing, maybe up in the nook that is the cranny? And hopefully it splashes just enough light down. That could work. We'll sort that out later. Because we have a situation where in here, we gotta get fittings. Now, because of the nature of this reservoir, you know, we have the fill port here. I think it probably uses this same tool. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, that's gonna forever stay like that, right? So we haven't got to worry about that. Problem is, I'm not gonna be able to access it anymore. So that's why I ordered a fill port. And you know, Steve from Gamers Nexus once said, the half case wasn't designed for water cooling. 
Now, he was referring more to the half X, because this definitely was. If it wasn't for designed for water cooling, why would they have put a fill port hole? Like literally the plastic mat that covers this literally says fill port. And it is the perfect size for fill port fitting. Now the question is, do I want to put it in the metal down there or do I want to put it up here? And I'm thinking up here onto the plastic simply because if I spill a bit of water, it's not going to get stuck in here. It'll get out here where I can wipe it up. So my intention for the fill port was to not use the fittings that I got. And this is where stuff gets super complicated because we have to like, we have to get fittings connected in behind. But the rad's all disconnected, so it should just pop all right out. The fans are mounted independently. They're not mounted to the rad, and then I just have four screws that go through the rad. Oh, look at that beauty. Isn't that a nice looking rad? I think so. We're gonna be able to test on this now to see if uh, we can get things to fit the way we want them to. Now for this fill port, you know, we got a half inch, hopefully prevents some air locking when we're actually filling. These are some nice uh, high end half inch that came, you know, you used to buy water cooling parts back in the early mid 2000s and they all came with half inch fittings, but you didn't want half inch. So you had to buy separate three eighths fittings. I guess that's how they get you. I got to get this plastic assembly off. Oh, we could use a little vacuum under there while we got this open, bud. Oh, I don't know if I can mount the fill port here because it looks like it's a bit wide to get the, um, uh, yeah, the lock ring doesn't quite fit. Not well enough. So, okay, we're gonna go down a tier then. This hole's actually a little bit too big. Look at that, she actually wants to fall right through there. The plot is thickening. Well, let's get the lock ring on place and see. Okay, so the fill port's under there now, but we should still be able to access it. Let's test because that tool goes deep enough. The thing is it's brass and it's just gonna flop around there now. Uh, I guess we can get at that easy enough. And if we're careful, we won't spill everywhere, so we should be good. So I guess we'll call it good there. But now we shall engage in some fitness because I feel like this is where I want the fill port because it's gonna be roughly above here. That's in, that'll be out, that'll be fill. So now we get to find out if one of my uh, 90s will time the way I want it to. Oh, 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 look at that. It's like not super tight, but it'll be good. We need to reseed it. One of the reasons why I got this kind of fitting instead of, you know, they have a, just a regular non-rotary 90 is because you have two margins. You can, you can rotate this around to get a different timing. And then if you just lightly snug that up, as you start to tighten this, you'll end up tightening both of them. And then it gives you some range of adjustment. So we might get lucky here. And we need just the shortest snippet of half inch tubing to make that connection. And then it should be leak free and rotary free. Now the question is how about rotary fittings on our good old radiator here? Because I need tubes to go up this way now. So once again, let's see how successful this will be. Okay. Oh, oh, oh bud. Oh, that's awesome. It's not super tight. Like I can reef on it, but it's well tight enough to compress the O-rings as much as I need them. So yeah. Yeah, you know what, that's gonna be, that's gonna be good like that. And I might be able to use my hard tubing still. I could keep this existing assembly and just snip off the loop and then have it come off here even though I still end up maintaining this ugly mounting solution here. But then it means I don't need to worry about new pipes here. They're just gonna all slip back on easily. Hmm. So the question is order now. Do I put the rad back in place and connect those pipes first? Well, I do have this huge open area here so I can get at everything that's going on down there. We'll need new pipes for the, uh, the reservoir anyway. So what I've decided to do indeed, that would have sat roughly right about there. So we gotta give them a little chopsy chopsky right there where the new fittings, they're gonna, because this height is in line, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this ugly mounting solution. I'm just gonna make a score mark done. it will be right about here. So I just use one of these guys like that. Now this is EK acrylic and acrylic doesn't always work with these cutters. EK does for whatever reason, it's just a little bit softer, but I know bits power acrylic. Oh boy, it'll crack right up if you try to use one of these cutters on it. Oh, it's flinging water at me. Now we slowly, gently increase the tension. Slowly, gently. It takes a little while, you gotta be patient. This EK acrylic seriously is soft though. I almost wonder if they lie about it being acrylic and it's actually PTG. But I've bought EK acrylic from PPCS multiple times and it cut the same way each time. But then you get this beautifully perfect cut after if you do it just right. And then this handy tool that I can't live without, it's 
not ideal, but it does the job. Okay. Now you gotta be careful of the edges here because you can cut your O-ring inserting it, but usually when you cut with the pipe cutters like that, you're gonna be okay. So let's get it fitting into place. I like the idea of reusing this mounting method because it's gonna clamp it onto here. It'll support it. Stop this from accidentally rotating out of place. Now, carefully and gently, we work that past the O-rings. Did I get them past both? Yeah, she's bottomed out. Oh, you know what? It's got more height than it did before, so that is not touching. Might have complicated things. We'll sort that out. And again, gotta do another cut. But you know, before I inserted this, I should have referenced directly against it so that they come out in a uniform fashion. All right, here we go again. Gently now. Oh, there's a tilt to that one. All right, now it's a question of this mounting method because this um, got raised off of there. And I'd like to hard clamp it down there, but like there is some positioning flex, but I don't like that. I want that tube to stay in there straight so it doesn't defeat the seal. Oh, great. Do I need two layers of this? Yeah, I think that's ultimately the solution to the problem. Two layers of this, uglifying the build. But I've kind of accepted that this isn't the prettiest build in the world, so. Solution to that problem is to position it just slightly away. Then get his zap strap. Bum, bum, I'm gonna need to cut two more pieces of that stuff there. So yes, the least we can do is face it away. Or wait, ah, oh, it's gonna be looking right at me. <sighs> Upside down and backwards, bud. Upside down and backwards. You gotta remember these things. Fortunately, if you still keep the slack, you can release zap straps, so. All right, that should be good like that. Yeah, it still perpetuates the ugly factor, but uh, at least it's a streamlined ugly factor. This thing wants to uh, spill. Yeah, there's an easier way. Get out. All right. Funny story, this is leftover tubing from one of my first water cooling builds. And I did take the time and the patience to actually get this beefy ass tubing fitted over these fittings. Ugh. And when I redid my loop the very next year, I scrapped this because it was just too hard to work with. But it was cool looking. It was definitely cool looking. Her, gotta get a little bit of snip on. Snip. Yep. All right, let's get the second strap into place. Ah, yes, she's ugly and she works. And this pipe is a bit discolored. I should have replaced with fresh stuff, but screw it. I want to get this done. And monolith is a function over form build. That is the primary goal. That's the reason why I have ugly solutions like this. Instead of having a 90, I have a whole extension assembly. And these uh, lockdown parts will stop this from putting tension on this assembly. And it also stopped this from rotating out of place so I can maintain leak-free performance. This guy's ready to install. But first, I need to get the fill port arrangement done on here, which I'm not sure how to film because I gotta like get in there, like just really. So it involves additioning this onto here. Now you can see I've off tilted that a bit because that's what will line up with where the fill port's located. Oh, oh, so close, bud, so close. That's gonna be tight. Oh, I gotta get my head in there. According to my rough measurements, I basically need to cut the uh, head off this hydra and that should be the correct length. Now how do we uh, cram that in there? We might have to take the fill port back out, insert it down. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do. See, now we're getting into very complicated realms because it's like, okay, then how do I get the lock ring back into place? Okay, well, let's um, slip that on there. All right, let's loosen up this fill port, get the, um, the ring pre onto there, get this in place. And then fill port goes up, and then fill port goes down. And then ring goes up and on. Holy freak, thread, bud, thread. You know you can do it. And now can we uh, push that? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Let's get some screws in there. Where's my screwdriver? <laughs> my screwdriver's right here. <laughs> so there is a bit of a contortion. Let's see if I can show you this. There it is. See that? Oh, boy. The fill port is slightly more forward, so there's a bit of flex on that, too, but... As long as she stays put, we'll be happy with it. Now to continue with this, 
I should put my, my hot swap base back into place so I know how much tubing I'm gonna need to get around there. Uh-huh, see that goes to the reservoir. No, that goes to, okay, that stays the same. Right here, this comes from the reservoir. We have to replace this one, and then this one goes to the reservoir. So we need to replace these two tubes. That reservoir should be relatively dry right now, so if we take our plugs out, we shouldn't get water leakage. And now is when we'll install some fresh fittings. Ah, uh, maybe I should have put the fitting in before. Okay, I got it, I got it. That plug, I almost couldn't grip on it. Okay, let's get the new return pipe. So, you know, you can't exactly see what I'm doing here, but that's fine, just use the force. Use your imagination. As I try to fit this pipe into place, oh, I need to screw down the other side. I can feel this whole thing flexing unfavorably. This is an example of what I mean. This is fresh tube and it's like, get on there. Yeah, these are not fun fittings to work with when you're first seating a tube. Okay, I'm gonna cut camera here for a bit because it's gonna take a while. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do here is uh, because it's a hard contort to get in there, you know, get it formed on a spare fitting outside of the connection you're trying to make. And then hopefully, hopefully, now that it's somewhat formed, oh, I'll find it easier to get on there. Yeah, that worked better. She's on there good now, bud. Now for tube measurements, we're gonna slip the hot swap back into place, make sure it doesn't conflict. And this tube has to go over to here. A little bit of extra slack. The cut is gonna be right about here. I use soft tubing because I, I tend to mod on this system like this a bit too often for hard tube. I want this system to be um, adjustable, if you will. <laughs> the struggle is real with this fittings. I can imagine these won't be popular. Like I don't recommend them unless you like the way they look and are really dedicated to tight assembly. I am the eccentric one after all. Of course, I don't just want to use a normal fitting. All right, that should be formed enough. Let's try and get her on here. <laughs> See what I mean? Doesn't this look fun to you, sir? At least you only have to do this once. Again, once it's form fitted, they are way easier to get on and off. And she's on there. And now we get to do that all over again for the next tube we have to replace. Yay! It just occurred to me, this is going to the wrong side. Awesome. So I've totally gone ahead and finished the connections. Um, well, you weren't paying attention because really I thought to myself, how much footage do I want to edit of me struggling with these fittings? These awkward, awkward fittings that you're probably never going to really want to use yourself. I'm just one of those crazy guys who would do that. But the reservoir is all connected now. This is excellent. Uh, pretty straightforward. Fill port, plug, and an in and an out. So the question is, what do we do next?